May we silence all cell phone and electronic devices, please. My name is Lidora Nicholas, and I'll be the moderator for this morning and afternoon class. Welcome to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school is a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clipper Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. <clears throat> Excuse me, we were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. Tampa Branch was established in 1996. At this time, I would like to introduce to you the Dean of the Tampa Branch, Dr. Joel Turner, President Dr. Cynthia Smith. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word, our Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of our Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by the Lord. The true title for the word of son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The true title for the word us, I mean the true title for the Holy Spirit is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul filled with the Holy Spirit tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are. Lord's many, God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is a title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia will prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor the Latin language have any letters or characters in the alphabet that can produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the death of the Messiah. Therefore, such name as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his state he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh and his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Yahweh Elohim. This is the word of Son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in the physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should all ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface to the Holy Name Bible. Also in this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, called Moses atop Mount Sinai <clears throat> and showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. This pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, 
court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern. And that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this school, we have 10 primary constitutional objectives and aims, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua and Messiah without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature and the powers laid to man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensation and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, Satan, and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eight is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tip to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in a new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. <clears throat> we have class dedicated prayer by Dr. Lawrence Edwards, a music selection by the Tampa Choir. Scripture lesson is Psalms of 139th Division. It'll be read by Dr. Sherry Williams. Who else we have Sherry? Okay. Our scripture reader is Dr. Lisa Zizi and Dr. Sherry Williams. Hold up, brother. <laughs> Good morning. We bow our hearts and our minds, give thanks to our Heavenly Father Yahweh for bringing us together again. Mm -hmm. This is our feast. Mm -hmm. We come together to, to enjoy the fruits of the Yahweh, <coughs> not ours. We don't have nothing to do with it. We just want to give thanks to Yahweh, hold each other up by the arm. And make sure that we stay together, just stay together and stand firm in what we believe in. Because mm -hmm. Yahweh is the only one that could keep us there. We're studying for our home one. Mm -hmm. So we're ready to go home. We just want to keep that adversary from, from making our, our uh, journey difficult. Mm -hmm. With those two words, let's say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Good morning. I'll be reading out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Trainer of the Scripture Research Association, Incorporated, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. Psalms, the 139th Division. O Yahweh, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down-sitting and mine uprising. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Yahweh, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up 
into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in Sheol, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkest darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O L! How great is the sum of them! If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O Elohim. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they spake against thee wickedly, and thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Yahweh, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. Search me, O El, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts, and see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. Psalms, the 139th Division. Amen. Before we call the first speaker, let's acknowledge our visiting brother, Dr. Perry, uh, Peggy Trevison from Syracuse. And our first speaker will be Dr. Peggy Travis. Ain't that nice? No, it's just one. It's it just one. You. No, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, this is nice because I came here and you take requests for music. I had mentioned to Jennifer that I loved that song. Really? Uh, she didn't tell me that. She didn't really? No. El Shaddai. That's, that's just yeah. the way things that's work, right? Spirit, right? I thought she might have said something. No, she didn't. Because she goes, I don't like that song. It's a hard part for me to sing. And I, yep. no, she goes, I don't like that song. And I'm like, whatever. She does it anyway. It was beautiful. Yes. I love it. I love yeah. that song. Especially the words that you guys put in there yes. to like yeah. really bring it home. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. Oh, it was so right. nice. So thank you. You do do re well. Yashva yeah. does request. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. Yashva okay. Does All right. Good. So um, the scripture reading is Psalms 139, and we'll just we'll just jump right in there. All right. Okay. Psalms 139 and one. O Yahweh, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and mine uprising. Mm -hmm. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Mm -hmm. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. Okay, so this reminds me of, is it Acts 17? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also mm -hmm. when you drop down, he goes, where am I going to go to get away from you? You know, there's just no getting away from your creator. So the smart thing to do is just, instead of fighting, I just throw in the towel. Just go, hey, you, you know, he knows what you're doing. He knows what you're about. And so our job in this creation is to get to know about him. You know, I know you have a job because you have to have food and a roof and all that kind of stuff. But your real job in this creation is to feed that inner man. You have, you know, you have the outer man, you got the physical body, but then you got all these bones inside that dictate that there's some, there's an inner man. Mm -hmm. And this is the one that 
the type of it is the bones can be there for a long, long, long time. The flesh pretty much doesn't, you know, after three days. I think Lazarus was pretty smelly, and they even said to him, he's going to stink. You're not going to go in there and do anything with that body. It's already, you know, he's been dead for three days. So the flesh doesn't last for long. And even when you think, oh, you know, we're doing better all the time, man now can live to be, you know, expect, life expectancy in the United States is, you know, whatever it is. And they think, oh, that's really great. Well, still, it's only whatever it is, 85 years, 95 right. years. Compared to eternity, mm -hmm. it's not even a drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. So what we're looking at is for that everlasting, that inner man, eternal life with our creator, and how, and how does that happen? So let's get, I think I called for Acts. Let's yeah, look at it before I go. I, don't, we're, we're not start I think it's 24. Acts 24. 24. Acts 17, 24. Yahweh that made the world and all things therein. See, we're being specific. It's Yahweh. He is the one that did make the world. Mm -hmm. And you know what? Before I came into the class, I didn't know that. I mean, I thought there was a God. And maybe he made the world, but I... It wasn't, I wasn't really convicted, you know? And when you come down here and they just start showing you proof after proof after proof after proof, how he made everything <coughs> in the creation according to this tabernacle pattern, then you just, you're building up that confidence right. in your creator, in him, and his purpose, and getting to know him. And that's um, John 17, 3. You might as well grab that. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to show you the stuff is in the book because sometimes John 17 you need to three. take the time. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true Elohim, and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Okay, so that's eternal life they're saying is to know him. And so that has to do with your inner man. So, you know, think of all the hours you spend at your job or taking care of your kids or you know, fixing yourself to get to class or to go out. and You spend a lot of time on the flesh, yeah. you know. Yeah. A lot. A lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> but along with that, you're also, it's not like you leave the flesh to be in the spirit. You don't do that. It all works together. Yeah. It all works together. So it's not like you're really leaving the flesh, you know, stepping in the door to get out of the flesh. Although this is a... Um, like a nice little retreat because you have left everything out there, you know, and you come together as one, and that's um, Psalms 133. Let's just grab that. Because mm -hmm. Dr. Kinley said that this teaching um, would make, what was the word he used? Everybody could be in agreement if they came. Reconciliation. This is the gospel of reconciliation. But you, the thing is, you have to reconcile yourself to the fact that there's a creator, and he has a name, and he has a purpose. You have to be reconciled to that. It's not your creator is going to change to make you happy. But you have to, be rec you have to recognize and be rec and reconciled to the fact that he does know your uprising. He does know everything about you. He knows what's going to come out of your mouth before you do. That was in your scripture. He knows that stuff. And you, just, you have to just reconcile yourself to that fact and realize that your only purpose here is to serve him. After the spirit, mm -hmm. the spirit and in yeah. truth. So, mm -hmm. what did I? 133 mm -hmm. and 1. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garments, mm -hmm. as the dew of Hermon and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Sion. For there Yahweh commanded the blessing, even life. Forevermore. See, we're talking about life eternally. He's talking about the priest here. The type is this priest here, and he was anointed before he could minister in the holy place or the most holy place, right? And he would be, oh, uh, he actually, no, I'm not going to go there. So he was anointed here, and it was, that oil was poured, and it just, and it just covered him entirely. And that is the type of uh, the Holy Spirit being poured out on mankind. And it's a type of when you come in here 
and you learn something about your Creator. That's that oil being poured on you. And that's what unites us all. We're all anointed with the same Spirit. The oil is a type. We're all anointed with that same Spirit. So there really shouldn't be any, like, controversy, or there shouldn't be any divisions and, and stuff like that. If you're all looking at the same thing, then it's going to work. It's how the Holy Spirit works. It's always, it's always in unity. And you can run that whole line of, um, in the most holy place, how there's, oh, there's unity. Um, and I don't want to do that. What I want to do is a little um, thing with the, um, this struck me. It was something that um, Diane Emler had worked with in Oceanside. You, might, you might, guys might have seen it. She worked with a lamb. Mm -hmm. how a lamb has to be adopted <coughs> to, to be um, so all through the scriptures you, you know that it's all about shepherds you know Moses was a shepherd we're all shepherds all the way down through and even Yahshua talks about feed my sheep feed my lambs all the way my um, pastors shall feed them with knowledge and understanding so he's talking about sheep and all this stuff you know what's funny is one night um, we we're working with sheep and John Cometti happened to, I don't know what he Googled, but he started reading from his phone about sheep. Do you know that if you let them out of the barn, they have no idea how to get back? No. They have no idea. Like cows, no. They go out, and they eat in the field, they you know it's time for milk, and they turn around, they go back, and they go in the barn. Sheep are like, duh. They're lost. <laughs> They're, lost. <laughs> They're lost. That's why they have to have a shepherd. And if they don't, if it's just wild sheep, then if one starts going, the others just, they follow. That's all they know is to follow. None of them has, they, they don't know where the water is. They don't know where the food is. The shepherd has to lead them to that spot. And I thought, <laughs> I go, this is how we were. We're so, we're like lost sheep. That's where it comes from. Because you said, you put them out the door and let them go, you know, they'll just eat and eat and eat, and all of a sudden they look up and they're like, they have no idea where they are. None. They know how, how to get back. None of it. And that's how we were. We are. Still are. <laughs> that's true. But we have, if we listen to the shepherd, then he's going to lead us to where the water is and the food is and take care of us. And that shepherd knows when the sheep's uprising and he knows when they're when he wants them to lay down, you know, and he, like that, the scripture was talking about how he knows all about you. That's your shepherd. He knows you. You're the lamb. Now, the second part of this is that um, the lamb, um, if a, a lamb is not doing well, it's a baby little lamb, and it's not um, thriving is the word. Mm -hmm. It's not thriving then either the mother doesn't have enough milk or maybe the mom died mm -hmm. and there's nobody to nurse this little lamb, right? So what they do is they get another you to um, nurse the lamb. But you can't just take a baby lamb that's hungry up and stick it next to the mo another lamb that has its own and it's nursing its own. It won't work. Um, the lamb has to smell like her own. All right, so what they do is when the lamb, the mother lamb, oh, and the one that they want, the one that has no mother, is not thriving, they call it an alien. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, so that's what they call it, an alien. So we were all aliens. I think that's in your book. Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Pretty sure. And so um, let, me get, let me just grab the article because there are a couple little things that it says that are really just to the point. <coughs> Just to the point. This is so cool because it's the the title of the article is "Grafting a Lamb Saving Management, Saving the Lambs," <coughs> right? And we're we're all lambs that we need to be saved because we don't know how to get there. No. We do not know. So we all are lambs that need to be saved. So um, lambing season. So the one that becomes. So they give you the reasons for why maybe a lamb needs to be fostered. Um, it's orphaned, nah, nah, nah. has too many, maybe one of them has triplets, you can't feed them all, so you've got to get this one lamb to go to somebody else. So the, um, the foster ooh is the, is the 
you that's grafting the lamb onto, that's the one that's going to be taking care of this little, poor little lamb. <coughs> the mother is the, of the birth mother, and the alien is the lamb we will be grafting onto the foster you. And I've got scriptures for all this stuff, but I don't want to, I don't want to take up the time. Um, uh, let's see. The selection of a foster you can be the make or break the adoption. So the good foster mother, right? And this is, I look at as Yashua, or the speaker on the floor. Above average in body condition score. That means they just have to be in good shape spiritually to be a leader. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? No, I don't need that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so the thin, you will have problems producing an, enough milk for two lambs, right? And she has to be calm by nature. Isn't that crazy? It can't be nervous or crazy. A nervous or crazy you won't work. It won't work. So it has to be, but that's how this teaching is. It has a calming effect, right? When the spirit's working right, it's calming. It's not like all like, oh, yeah, let's get mad at so-and-so. Let's go beat up. You know, then it's not that. It's calming. It's soothing. So that's the nature of the foster one that's, you know, um, has to have a good milk supply. So we know that Yash was provided us with teachers that have great milk supplies. Yep, right. No problem there. No shortage there. Yep. Right? There's plenty for them to be fed. Now, oh, this must be the rest of it. Okay, so um, and then they have to have teats that are suitable for nursing. They can't be too big. They can't be too small. So it's like the portions that you're serving. You know, if there's new people there, you're not going to go, you know, crazy and start using, you know, we have a lot of terminology that we only use here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we want to do kind of street language when there's somebody new there. So this is just breaking it down for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. We all know, we all know this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so I guess I can have you read that. That paragraph there to get us going on the grafting. This grafting. Slime grafting? Slime grafting. That's what it's yes. called. The slime method can be used only while the foster you is lambing. Due to the high maternal instinct of most ewes, they can be fooled into thinking they have given birth to two lambs instead of just one. Mm -hmm. To accomplish this graft, the shepherd must have in mind a lamb that will benefit from being grafted. Mm -hmm. Shepherds should make each lamb stand twice a day and observe their reaction. A healthy lamb that has enough milk will stretch when it stands. A lamb that is not getting enough milk will not stretch, but will immediately look for milk. That's the people in the churches. They're not getting fat. You know, so when they stand, they're immediately, uh, this church isn't doing it for me. I'm going to go over here or whatever. This ch Okay, church isn't doing it for me. I'm going to try drugs. Okay, that didn't work. I'm going to try this. I'm going to try, I'm going to try. They're hungry. They need, they're not, they're not thriving, right? And so they're just looking, looking, looking. And the other ones are pretty comfortable. They just stand up and, <sighs> don't you think of a deep, when you stretch, it's like, you're, you're mm -hmm. comfortable. You're not mm -hmm. stressed. You've been, co you're comforted, mm -hmm. you know? And so that's what this gospel does, you know? So we're the little lambs that when we stand up, we can just, <sighs> and we know what that's all about, even taking the breath, mm -hmm. you know? So A lamb that is obviously not thriving is also a good choice for an alien lamb. Mm -hmm. And that's anybody out there. They're not thriving spiritually. They're not thriving. I have that scripture. Okay. Go ahead. Oh, well, it's, um, she, she got it. <laughs> Go ahead. You can keep reading. The alien lamb must be able to stand and move about for any graft to be successful. If the lamb is down, it needs immediate intensive care. That's what most of them, the walking dead. You know, and once in a while, if they can walk, some of them, they walk into this door mm -hmm. and they can be taken care of. Yeah. You know, if they're out there and they're down and out, chances aren't real good. You know what I'm saying? But if they at least come through the door, mm -hmm. if 
chances of that lamb survival are much better if it can walk, mm -hmm. all right? When a potential foster you lambs with a single, the shepherd should check to make sure. This is done by inserting your hand into the Oh, we don't have to get into the graphic yeah. show. Uh -huh. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little graphic there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> It just, it just gets kind of graphic, that's all. You, you can get this article online if you want. It's the, um, I forgot where, where it was from. Let's see. Did we do this? No. Okay, that's it. A U identifies its lamb by smell at first. Mm -hmm. Therefore, your plaint plan is to make the alien smell like the foster used lamb. Right? It's got to make it smell like it belongs to her. That's the, that's the idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Smear the alien lamb with the birthing fluids of the foster you. That's enough. There's more to that, but that's enough. You yeah. get the idea. So they take the afterbirth and they smear the lamb. Yeah. Right. And then they present it to the mother. So <coughs> the blood of the lamb. Yes. Get it? Mm -hmm. To me, it just was like, yeah. boosh. <laughs> yeah. It makes us acceptable. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. yeah. That's why you're here. Get yeah. that. Mm -hmm. You're getting smeared. <laughs> I mean, you're getting slimed. Yeah, smeared, <laughs> slimed. You're getting that blood, but that's yeah. the point. Yeah. That Yahshua shed his blood, yeah. and that blood has had an effect on us. Yeah. And that's, you know, to bring us into his family so that we're, we're part of this amazing body it's just blows my mind mm -hmm. I'm just I'm just like and it just for some reason it just um, struck a chord with me because I've always heard oh he shed his blood I heard that when I was in Roman Catholic Church he shed his blood for you <laughs> what what you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so this you know showing how he works his purpose with the lamb and we're so lost we have no idea mm -hmm. and then we can't even feed ourselves and mm -hmm. you know we're just so so lost and then he just brings us in, sheds his blood, lets, so that we're, part, we're partakers of that Holy Spirit. I don't know, you know, sometimes words are like, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you can't exactly express what you want to say because they're, what they say, words are a crucifixion of thought or something like that. It really, to put it into words isn't even the power of what's in your head or what the Holy Spirit's trying to reveal, you know, so... Anyway, I don't know if there's any more there or not, but it just hit me like a ton of bro yeah. bricks. Mm -hmm. You have some underline. Okay. Color does not seem to be a problem when grafting. No. A black lamb can be grafted onto a white face you that has a brockle or white lamb. Yeah, mm -hmm. doesn't matter. They don't care. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if there's anything else mm -hmm. underlined there or not. Um, hold the alien up behind the you to cover it with the fluid. This is what you have underlined. Add more birthing fluids to both lambs if possible. Then oh, that's if there's, yeah, there's two, yeah. Stand back and observe what happens. There it is. Yeah, Just yeah, stand back and observe. Right. Yeah. Once mm -hmm. you've done it, once you've put the blood on the people's head, Yahshua's blood, that's what you're doing. Yeah. You're delivering his blood mm -hmm. with this gospel of blood, water, spirit, death, burial, resurrection. Mm -hmm. You're putting the blood on them, mm -hmm. trying to make them acceptable, right? If the foster you starts to lick both lambs and make mothering sounds, this is excellent. So it's just, you know, if, and the lamb responds to, I think. This is in there. Do not rush her into making any decisions. See that? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Let her mother the lambs at her own speed. Yeah. The longer that she licks and talks to the lambs, the greater is the chance that she will accept the alien. And that makes it the greater the chance the alien's going to be accepted and be fed and thrive. Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm -hmm. So to me, I was just like, yeah, oh, that was too pretty. Mm -hmm. I just love that. That was awesome. So that's it. Put up number two. Thank you. All right, our next speaker. But would be the dean, a vision brother with, uh, from Syracuse, the dean of the uh, Syracuse branch, Dr. Uh, Rick Travis. Travis, I mean, sorry about that. <laughs> Morning. Morning. It is pretty, isn't it? Yes, yeah, it is pretty. It's 
only, only by the blood of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. And that is it. That's right. It's over in Hebrews, I think mm -hmm. ninth or 10th chapter. Uh, not exactly sure about the verse. Okay. Much more so the blood of Yahshua. So, okay. Um, Hebrews 9, uh, 11, but Yahshua being come a high priest. Oh, you want to pick it up before that? Pardon? I think that would be Okay. Hebrews 9 and 11. But Yahshua being come a high priest of good things to come. Now, Yahshua has become a high priest. It's because he has to fulfill. And he's fulfilling Melchizedek. He's fulfilling the Melchizedek priesthood. And he's fulfilling uh, the kingship of David. So he's fulfilling uh, the, because he comes in the tribe of Judah. Do you understand? Judah was the kingship tribe. These tribes out here, you see Judah? It's right in the front here. And there was a, a line a symbol, a flag of a line in front of here. It was a line, an eagle, a man, and what? Ox. An axe. There were four of them. And the line was here. That was the kingship tribe. He has to be the king of what? Kings. Kings. He's got to fulfill that. So he comes in and he's going to be king and what? High priest. High priest. So he's got to fulfill that priesthood of Melchizedek. Which is after, it's after the order of Melchizedek, which is in the seventh chapter of Hebrews. And you can read about this on your own, but it's not after Levi. Mm -hmm. That's right. mm -hmm. You see? So you can read about Melchizedek back here. All, all, it's got a very small space right here. But it's up here on your 40-foot chart. And um, he blessed Abraham. Oh, how am I getting into this now? <laughs> Melchizedek and Abraham. He blessed Abraham after the slaughter of the kings. And um, Melchizedek means righteousness. Okay? And... Um, it was in Salem, which is peace. And when he blessed Abraham, there was joy. So it's the righteousness, peace, and joy in the most holy place. Do you understand? And the kingdom of Yahweh, it's Romans 14, 17. We can grab it quick. And we're going to go back there. I know I got off on a tangent here. <laughs> For the kingdom of Yahweh is not meat and drink. It's now it's not a physical thing. And look, my wife talked about the people out here. And this morning, there's a lot of them going to mass and going to church. And um, they're looking for God. They're looking for Jesus to come back. They're looking. They're all hung up on a manifestation. They don't understand the principle. They don't understand the invisible. All they could see is the physical things. So they're just looking for something physical and they're looking for Jesus to come back physically on a cloud. The rapture, if you will. You understand? Uh, but the kingdom is not meat and drink. It's not physical. It's not a physical kingdom. In Israel back here, when Yahshua was in his ministry, they, let's get it, it's Luke the 17th chapter, I think it's in the 20, starting the 20th verse. Luke 17 and 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees. Now they were always 
testing him. They were always trying to trip him up. They hated him because he spoke with authority and he knew what he was saying and he was a threat to their power and their authority and they did not like it. He was upsetting the status quo. Do you understand? If what he says is true, they're going to be out of work. <laughs> Go ahead and read. So here they are. They're trying to put him on the spot. No, they don't understand. That's the creator walking around. They, have no, they don't understand that. Go ahead. Luke 17 and 20. And when he was demanded of the Pharisees, when the kingdom of Yahweh should come... When the kingdom of Yahweh should come. Now, Israel, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, all the leaders back there were looking for the kingdom of Israel to return in its physical glory. The glory that it had. I don't know if you have it here. Uh... David? Uh, anyway, under da David, Saul was the first king, David was the second king, his son Solomon was the third king. And under Solomon, Israel reached its pinnacle of wealth and of glory and of power. They even had a navy. And he was friends with Hiram up in Lebanon. And they got the cedars of Lebanon from him. And the cedars of Lebanon went in to the construction of the temple. There was Solomon asked for wisdom. And because he asked for that and not all kinds of stuff, everything was given to him. And... The kingdom was at its limit of power and fame. You know, people came from everywhere to ask Solomon questions. Now Israel is expecting that kingdom to be restored. Like that. Do you understand? Again, physical. Physical. So they're asking them when the kingdom of Yahweh would come. Mm -hmm. That's what they mean when they say kingdom. Go ahead and read. 21. Well, starting at the kingdom. Um, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of Yahweh should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of Yahweh cometh not with observation. No, it doesn't. It's not something you're going to see with your eyeballs. It's not something you're going to see with your physical eyes. Read. Neither shall they say, lo, here. Hey, it's over here. Or so it's up there in Salve, New York. <laughs> <laughs> it's in Los Angeles. Well, some people believe that. Yes. Yes. Go ahead and read. Or lo, there. For behold, the kingdom of Yahweh is within you. And look, the kingdom is in you. Uh -huh. Now here's the thing. The kingdom's in you, and you're in the kingdom. You're sitting in the kingdom today, and the kingdom's sitting right within you. Because the kingdom is composed of these divine attributes of Yahweh Elohim, or Yahweh, see, intelligence, wisdom, knowledge, love, beauty, justice, foundation, power, and strength. And when those things are put within you, when you receive the Holy Spirit, they're put within you. And that is the kingdom. That's what the kingdom is. That's why you don't see it with your physical eyes. Do you understand? He, that's why he said, for the kingdom of Yahweh 
is within you. Now we got to go back to Hebrews. We got, we got, <laughs> we segued, but we're going back. Okay, go ahead. We're in Hebrews 9 and 11. And don't let me get lost. I'll do my best. Okay. No promises. All right. Don't you let me get lost. All right. Hebrews 9, 11. But Yahshua being come, a high priest of good things to come. And we did all that to explain high priest and king and kingdom. Go ahead. By a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Not of this building. Greater and more perfect tabernacle, the earth plane, and your body. Go ahead. Neither by the blood of goats and calves. Which is what they did all the way down through. See? There were certain sacrifices, and some required goats, some required lambs, some required bulls, some required turtle doves, uh, fruits of the field. There were all kinds of sacrifices back here. But it's not by this now he's talking about. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Neither by the blood of goats and calves. That's not that kind of blood. It's not that kind of blood. Go ahead. But by his own blood. By his own blood. Whose own blood? Yeshua. Yeshua's own blood. Nobody else's. Not Dr. Kinley's. I'm not, look. Yeah, and I am mad. <laughs> it was touching what my wife presented this morning. Mm -hmm. Touching. Mm -hmm. And there, were, there are people in our school that would laugh at that. Mock it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just a shame. Yeah. It's a shame. You want so badly for people to see this sort of stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Hebrews 9.12 Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. His own blood. His own blood. It had to be that. He had to die that death on that cross. And that was ordained from way back up in here. And he takes on shape and form and he creates a creation and he executes a purpose and that purpose is going to be salvation so that Yahweh could be glorified. And so he has to come down in the flesh and deliver those put into bondage of the devil and bring them souls back. It's a migration. Just like the priesthood was a migration. Just like Moses went up and came down, it was a migration. Just like Israel went up into them. You understand they were up here in Canaan land. And where did they have to go? into Egypt and then what did they do it took them a while but eventually they had to come back into Canaan land everything in the purpose was a migration salmon migrate do you know that a I am off into areas I didn't even <laughs> dream about see it's just you're not in control of these things hopefully you're not in control of these things a salmon is born in a little tiny rivulet, a streamlet, way up in, let's say, Idaho or Montana. Mm -hmm. And it grows, and it gains size, and it migrates, and leaves that place, and goes down that stream, and goes into, let's say, the Columbia River, and makes its way into the Pacific Ocean and goes into the Pacific Ocean 
and lives there for a number of years and gets big. And then when it's time to mate, that salmon goes back and goes back into that river and goes back into that stream and then that rivulet and then that same tiny little place and lays eggs in the same place it was born. That's right. Who's in control of that? Yes. The salmon? <laughs> Do you understand? Do you see that migration? And it's all showing the migration of the Godhead. Yahweh, Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua, and then back to the Father. All of it is showing you something about spiritual things. It's just something else. Uh, go ahead and read. Yep. We ain't done yet. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hebrews 9.12 Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once. In once! Mm -hmm. Once! Yep. One time. Read. Into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For us, for, and you know what? For all. <clears throat> for all the souls of them that slept in the dust of the earth. When he resurrected, oh, goodness, let's get it. Matthew 27, 52. Because otherwise it's just me saying it. Matthew 27 and 52. And the graves were opened. Now the graves were opened. This is after Yahshua's death on the cross. Okay? And he's been in the tomb and he's resurrected. Does everybody understand? Death, burial, resurrection and the graves were opened wait a minute see now we used to read over that now what graves the graves of Adam Abraham Isaac Moses all of them all the way on up through all of them were all sleeping in the dust of the earth, waiting. They were waiting. Read. And the graves were opened, <clears throat> and many bodies of the sons which slept arose. The sons, not saints, mm -hmm. which is what Catholic Church teaches, teaches, sons. And I could say daughters. Sons and daughters. Mm -hmm. Rose. And what? And came out of the graves after his resurrection. After his resurrection. They got to wait for his resurrection. Read. And went into the holy city and appeared unto many. And appeared unto many. Look, they had, he's got to rise first. Because he's the what? First fruits. First fruits. Then they rise and they have to, he has to follow them. They choose to go into Jerusalem. Look, he's going in and there. When he walked around in his ministry, he didn't go to Peter and, and all of them and say, uh, look, you fellas, look, are you busy? Would you like to? You got time to? What did he say? Follow me. Back here at Mount Sinai, he gave them a law. And he said, look, I've given you these commandments. What I want you to do is form some committees and vote on these things. And if you like them, then we'll, we'll make a covenant and we'll be all set. What did he say? These were, what were they called? Commandments. Commandments. Not requests. These were commandments. 
And Israel said, everything that thou hast said will we do and be obedient. A covenant was made there. He's the husband, they're the bride. He's the man, they're the woman. Well, that's another whole, that's another whole lecture. The point is, they did not choose whether they wanted those commandments or not. There was not a choice involved. They were given to them. Yahshua did not give them a choice whether to follow him. Eve did not have a choice whether to partake of this fruit. Adam had to give up his life for his bride. <coughs> he did not have a choice. Well, they had a choice. They made a choice. But the choice was determined for them. Mm -hmm. It was determined for them by the purpose. Mm -hmm. Here's why. She's got to fall. He's got to fall. If they don't fall, there's no purpose set up for a redeemer. There's no purpose set up for Yahshua. They have to fall. So they have to partake of the fruit. So ultimately, they really did not have a choice. Do you understand? It's setting up the whole purpose back here. And we could go through the whole 40-foot chart like that. That's, that's not what we're going to do. It's another lecture entirely. But it's going to touch on what's in the scripture reading, too. So we're going to go to that. Are, you're not finished yet, right? Uh, just a couple more. A couple more. Go ahead. 13, Hebrews 9, 13. For the blood of wolves and of goats and the ashes of the heifer, sprinkling the unclean, sanctifies to the peering of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Yahshua, who through the eternal spirit, offered himself without spot to Yahweh? He offered himself. The blood of Yahshua. It's the blood of Yahshua. Read. How much more shall the blood of Yahshua, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to Yahweh, purge your conscience? Purge our conscience. And it says over there in Hebrews, the ninth chapter, that even the, the conscience of the priest, we have to get it, uh, Hebrews 9 and 9, I think it is. Okay, yeah. Hebrews 9, 9, same chapter. Which was a figure for the time then present. This was a figure for the time. you got to read what's before that. Yeah. But it's talking about the tabernacle, and it's talking about the priesthood in here. And it's saying that it was a figure. Mm -hmm. It was an example. Mm -hmm. It was pointing to something. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Which was a figure for the time <coughs> then present in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices. Sacrifices. That could not make him that did the service. Who's him? Us. The priest. It could not make him perfect. That, that, perfect. that did the service perfect. Perfect. As pertaining to the conscience. Ah. No matter what he did, he couldn't clean his conscience. Right. Which, see, Adam left this garden with a condemned conscience. And the way this was set up, this could not take care of that conscience. It could only be done through the blood of Yahshua the Messiah. Do you understand that? The blood of bulls and goats and all that, it, it just didn't do it. Just didn't do it. That's what all this is talking about. And it was... It was written for the Hebrews back there. There were Hebrews that were in charge of the classes back there. But the, there were a lot of Greeks and such in these classes. And then the, the Jews that were the head of the class would disseminate it out to the Greeks. You understand? <coughs> Go ahead and read. Um. <coughs> Uh, how much more shall the blood of Yahshua, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to Yahweh, purge your conscience from dead works to... Purge our conscience. 
I got some. Purge? Okay. You can have another one. <laughs> Purge our conscience, right? Purge your, our conscience from dead works to serve the living Elohim. And, and Catholicism was nothing but a, a guilt trip. Yeah. And I'm glad not to be walking around with it anymore. Yeah. I really am. I'm free of that. And he said that the truth would set me free. Is that right? Is that right? He said the truth would make you free. There's a big difference. You're going to get made free whether you like it or not. And I came into this class and I didn't like it. And he made me free anyway. <laughs> Did you understand? Yeah. I was going to come in here and argue with it and prove it wrong, but that's 42 years ago. <laughs> I'll show him. I'll tell you, you cannot go up against this. You cannot go up against this vision of, of, of the founder or Yahshua that he's given us. You aren't going up against it because this is far, so far beyond man's intelligence, although it doesn't look like it. It's, it's light years. Light years, which is what, how they measure distance in space. Light years, which I forget how many years that is, but it's, it's, a, it's a ton, okay? <laughs> it's a lot. You done? Yeah, basically. It just talks a meteor of a New Testament. Okay, and there's another spot in there where he says um, that he died once for all. And... When those souls went on into Jerusalem, they ended in up in that upper room on the day of Pentecost. And there was angels up in there. And there was the 120 up in there. And Mary was up in there. Not the thing that they made of her today, this Saint Mary, this uh, Mediatrix, this mother of God, this tabernacle of God, this all this nonsense, but just Mary. Like any other person. And they received the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost in that upper room and so did these souls that slept in the dust of the earth. They had to wait to receive the promise for these ones. And the angels did too. I can't just say that because everybody thinks, oh, it's you saying that. So we got to go to Hebrews. We got to get the 11th chapter. And, um, you know, I don't know how I'm off into this stuff. <laughs> I just want to pick up a few verses. Um, It's down in the middle of the chapter somewhere. It talks about that they they had a good report, but they they did not receive the promise. Okay. Yes. Pick it up or a verse couple 39? verses. Okay. Um, uh, and then down toward the end of the chapter too. Okay. Okay. Okay, we're in Hebrews 11, 36. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. So he's talking about faith in this chapter. He's talking about all the things that people went through. Okay? And we're only partway through the chapter. Yeah. Go ahead and read. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings. Scourgings, they were mocked, they were all, you know, and look, so are you. You may not go through some of the things they went through back here, because those, those apostles were put to death. They underwent horrible deaths. 
But you undergo a spiritual death when people slander your name or any sort of thing like that because of the fact that you teach the truth. Oh, that, that Sherry, she's, a, she's an idiot. Do you understand? Slander. They'll kill you. They'll kill your reputation. They'll kill your friends. They all don't want anything to do with you anymore. You realize they never were my friends. They were acquaintances. They were people I knew. But my friends, my family, they're in class. That's my spiritual family. I got a physical family. I love my family, okay? Mm -hmm. But this is my real family. And I really love my spiritual family. Go ahead. Hebrews 11.36, And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder. They were stoned. Sawn asunder. What's that mean? Cut him, with a, cut him with a chainsaw. <laughs> Go ahead and read. We're tempted. We're slain with the sword. Swords, really? They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all having obtained a good report. Now they all obtained a good report. Mm -hmm. All of them. Mm -hmm. Noah. Mm -hmm. Jonah. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. Obadiah. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. They all obtained a good report. Read. These all Having obtained a good report through faith. Through faith. Mm -hmm. Through faith, not through the law. Right. Mm -hmm. Through faith. Read. Received not the promise. They did not receive the promise. Now, I want you to see that that is in the book. They did not receive the promise. Read. 40. Yahweh having provided some better thing for us, that they without us... They, they, who? The ones that slept in the dust of the earth, without us, read... Should not be made perfect. Should not be made perfect. We're all going to be made perfect. How? By the blood of the Lamb. Isn't that something? By the blood of the Lamb, by the preaching of the gospel. Uh, let's go to the scripture reading. It's important to touch on that. Um, uh, Psalms 139. I'm going to read some part of it, okay? Go ahead. And one. O Yahweh, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. Yes. Thou understandest my thought. Far off. It's like Peggy said, he knows what we're going to say before we say it. As a matter of fact, according to Dr. Kenley, he puts the thoughts in our head. That's right. Puts them right in our head. Imagine that. He, he, knows the, he knows how many hairs are on your head. Now, it's not how, in my case, okay? <laughs> <laughs> it was when I first came into class, but it isn't anymore. Some of you are a different story. Go ahead and read. Thou compasseth my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. Look, he's running the show. He's familiar. He's acquainted. He knows the whole thing. And he knew you back up in here. Read. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Yahweh, thou knowest it all together. Yep, that's right, read. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. 
Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. Oh, isn't this, isn't this wonderful? Mm -hmm. Wasn't that this morning wonderful? It is it's wonder. I mean, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. You don't just... <laughs> That stuff, that's a revelation, that stuff. And do you know that mm -hmm. if something like that, if you enjoy something like that, if that lifts your heart, that that was not the Holy Spirit in Peggy that was doing that to you. It was the Holy Spirit in you that was lifting your heart. It's the whole it's spirit, what? Witnessing to spirit. And this is what's important about it. We get discouraged. But you have to understand that the only way you can understand the kind of thing that was presented this morning is by the Holy Spirit in you. And that should be encouraging to you. That there's something in you that's different than what's in the world. The Holy Spirit is the only thing that can reveal that sort of thing to you. And it's whenever you get down or whenever you have doubts, you got to say, hey, I know that name. That name is important to me. I know Yahshua fulfilled. I know I'm in a new covenant. I know I'm in the kingdom. That should be encouraging to you. Go ahead. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot attain unto it. Whether shall I go from thy spirit, or whether shall I flee from thy presence? If I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. Yes, go down to... Uh, uh, I don't know, what is it, 13? Uh, For this my reins covered my mother's womb. Yes. That's 13. 13. Yes. For thou hast possessed my reins. You have possessed my reins. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. You look. He knew he knew you in the womb. Look, I want to show a hand of how many people in here chose to be born. <laughs> And chose to be born in the family that they were born into. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody. No control over it, huh? That we got no control over how we're born spiritually. It's all under his control. Born into the family of Yahshua the Messiah. Through his blood. Go ahead and read. <coughs> 14. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Ah, and anytime Joel or anybody else gets up here and shows you the body tabernacle and shows you how you're made by a pattern... You understand how you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Yeah. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. And I used to do that thing when I first came into class. I was studying anatomy and, co and physiology and, uh, on the GI Bell, you know, at nights in college. And I could get up and run this thing in a half an hour. I ready to go right to everything. I could break down the ear by the pattern. I could break. I forgot a lot of it now. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I was so proud of myself, but it took me a while to really understand that it's more than just structure. It's function, too. There's a structure and there's a function. The structure was how it was built. The function was the priesthood in it. 
Anatomy and physiology, there's a structure to your body, but then the function is how it's all working together. Do you understand? It took me years to understand the function. Years. I've just understand some of these things in the last couple, three years. It's when he opens them up to you. I'm just understanding some things on the floor here today. You know, I remember Bobby Sikowski one time. He was on the floor. I don't know how many of you know him. He's the dean of Rhode Island over there. It's that little tiny state over there, up north. <laughs> and um, he was on the floor, and he was, he was on a roll, and he stopped, and he said, he said, you people enjoying this? And a bunch of people said, yeah. He goes, I know I, know I sure am. <laughs> he was getting as much of a kick out of it as the people in the audience. Do you understand? Go ahead and read. 14, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Mm -hmm. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Yep, nothing was hid from him. Mm -hmm. Nothing was hid from him. Go ahead. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book... Thine eyes did see my substance, mm -hmm. yet unperfect. Mm -hmm. Read. And in thy book, all my members were written. Look, what book? The book of life. You were written. Back up here. Yes, it was the book of life. You were written in him. Back up here. From the get-go. And the whole purpose had to unfold. So that, so that it could manifest. It's going to manifest. It's going to manifest. Hmm. Boy, read. Which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. That's good. That's good. Um, I think I'm going to have you read some of this here. Tell them what you're reading, okay. where you're reading it from, right. and... Um, I want to try to tie this in, and I want to, as long as I got off on all this, go ahead. The Smithsonian Secrets of American History. Um, I, I started subscribing to the Smithsonian Magazine, and it's got a lot of good stuff in there. The people that run the magazine are out of their minds, you know, but, but, but they have very good articles. And this particular article... I looked at it and I go, I wasn't even going to read it. I wasn't even going to read it. Then I started reading it and <laughs> boom, there were all these jots in there. This is September 2018, volume 49, number 5. Okay. Okay. The Fearless Writ of Forest Country, County. Forest County. County. Okay, the Fearless Wit, okay? Wit. Okay. Wit of uh, mm -hmm. Forest County, right? Yes. Okay. On May 17, 1954. This is 1954. I was seven years old. Chuck was 17. Ha, 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> Go ahead and read. A man named P.D. East spent part of his work day for photographing a chicken egg that weighed a quarter of a pound. Mm hmm just the stuff I underlined. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna, sorry. I was, I was wondering. Go I wonder why yeah. I underlined. <laughs> okay. Also, on May 17th, the Supreme Court of the United States released its decision in Brown versus the Board of Education mm -hmm. of Topeka, Kansas. You'd have to look that up and see what that was all about. Okay. Outlawing racial segregation right. in public schools. They outlawed racial segregation. Right. But. The South really wasn't what, what you would call compliant with it or obedient to it. It took years, and federal troops had to go down there and make a lot of them maybe behave. And even then, 
But anyway, go ahead. Over the next several months, as East absorbed what the ruling would mean for Mississippi, he this found guy, that's the guy's name, right? Mm -hmm. This this the guy's name. Go ahead, East. He Go found ahead. himself agreeing with the court's reasoning and its nine to zero opinion. The vast majority of his advertisers did not. And the vast, he had this little newspaper, and the majority of his advertisers did not like what the what the Supreme Court had to say. Although he agreed with it. So he kept his thoughts to himself. So he kept his thoughts to himself. I didn't entertain any thought of coming out against the He didn't come out of the closet. Of society. You understand? He, just, he did not want to go against the mores of society. He's way down there in, the, forget, Alabama or Mississippi. Mississippi. He's mm -hmm. not going to go against, you know, just start going out in the street. And, you understand? in which I had been born and reared. He was raised in this society. Read. Then Mississippi, like most southern states, began taking steps to preserve its segregated society. Right away they took steps. Jim Crow laws and all that sort of thing. You'll have to look, Google Jim Crow and, and find out what it was all about. I closed my eyes and ears tighter. He closed his eyes and ears tighter. Tighter. Do you understand what he's doing? He's trying to insulate him. He's trying to protect himself and his business. He's trying not to make waves. Trying not to rock the boat. Read. But inside my heart and mind. Uh, inside wrong. my heart and I'm sorry to interrupt you. Inside my heart and mind. Something was wrong. Something was wrong. Now hold that there. Oh, Jeremiah, twentieth chapter. Start reading. Uh, I think seven. Jeremiah 20 and 7. O Yahweh, thou hast deceived me. Now, now who's this speaking? Uh, this is Jeremiah. Yeah. Yahweh, you have deceived me. Yeah. Read. And I was deceived. Thou art stronger than I. You're stronger than me. And has prevailed. Go ahead. I am in derision daily. I'm in derision daily. What's mm -hmm. derision? Mm -hmm. It's when people mock. Derision is when people mock. Okay? He's being mocked daily. Jeremiah got mocked all the time. Read. Everyone mocking me. Everybody's mocking me. You see, you gotta understand he's in a situation, he's by himself, and he's up against everybody. That's tough. Think of yourself in those shoes. Read. Eight. For since I spake. Since I spoke. I cried out. I cried violence and spoil. Mm -hmm. Because the word of Yahweh was made a reproach unto me. The, the word of Yahweh was made a reproach. They, they mocked him for preaching the word of Yahweh. Do you understand? Have you ever been mocked for preaching the word of Yahweh? If you ain't, you're going to be. And if you don't get mocked, you better wonder why. Read. Because the word of Yahweh was made a reproach unto me mm -hmm. and derision daily. See, that's like this guy. Read. Then I said, I will not make mention of him. I'm not going to talk about Yahweh. See, this guy was going to be quiet. I'm not going to talk about Yahweh. Read. Nor speak any more in his name. I'm not going to speak in his name. <laughs> Yahoo! Yahoo! <laughs> you go to Yahoo, class. Yeah, yeah. Right or wrong? Right. Read. But his word was in mine heart. But his word was where? 
in my mouth. Heart. Look, when it's in your heart, that's different. That's the kingdom. When it's written, he said, I will write it where? In their hearts. And put it in their blinds. And they shall be my, my people. And I will be their own. Right or wrong? And then he, he said over in Ezekiel, he would give them a new heart. He's putting it right, it's right in their heart, in his heart. Mm -hmm. Read. But his word was in my heart, as a burning fire shut up. Oh, it was a burning fire. Mm -hmm. Burning fire. Read. As a burning fire shut up in my bones, and I was weary with forbearing. I could not. I could not stay. I could not stop. Yeah. He had to what? Mm. Let it out. See, we're reading the King's English sometimes and stuff. Yeah. I could not forbear. Right. <laughs> 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 I had to open my yap. <laughs> Do you understand? Right. He had to. Now, back to the article, uh -huh. please. But inside my heart and mind, something was wrong. Something was wrong inside my heart and mind. I had to get it out. Whatever Look, something was, was, oh boy, go ahead. Uh -huh. I had to let it out, right? Yeah. I had to let it out. Jeremiah had to let it out. Read. We feel the magnolia should give way to the, I don't know, you got that under, to the crawfish. <coughs> the crawfish was fitting, he wrote, because it moves only, you got that under. That's all right, okay. skip over it. All if right. you, that's all right. So he sat in his office one day in the spring of 55 and wrote that it was time for a new symbol for the magnolia state. Yeah, the Magnolia State. Right? Read. Um, it also got he spied on, spat upon. He got spied on? Violence and worse. He got spat upon because now he's starting to write the truth. Do you understand? They spat on him. They spied on him. And what? And was threatened with violence. Violence? And worse. And worse. Guys alone. Read. Historians have described Jim Crow era Mississippi in exceptionally harsh terms. Har look, exceptionally harsh. Look, there's a museum they just built down there in, I think it's Mississippi, and they got a big steel bar hanging in this museum for every black man and woman that was hanged from the Civil War or from slavery all the way on up through Jim Crow. And I'm talking in the 50s and 60s. And there's all these big, huge iron bars hanging down in this museum. I'm telling you, I forget the name of the museum, but it's it's... Remarkable, it's unbelievable. And I think they got the names of the individuals etched into these bars. You can't go in there and not cry. That's talking about exceptionally harsh. Read. Thus, the tiny petal paper, circulation 2300 at its peak, launched one of the most relentless and single-minded crusades in the history of the Southern press. <laughs> in the history of the Southern press, this tiny newspaper launched a relentless tirade to get the truth out. Can you imagine? The prince of the... the we're reading about manifestations here. But you understand the principle behind it? That no matter what you're up against, you're going to preach that gospel. And I don't mean knocking down people's doors and, and, and coming on too strong because that doesn't work. But when the door's open, you got to open your mouth and you got to tell the truth. That's all. See, you got you got to preach the gospel. And while I'm at that, since I don't know who's watching, we're gonna hold this. We're going back. 
I want to get what the gospel is. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 15th chapter. Start reading in the first verse. I know you all know this probably by heart. 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, brethren. Now, moreover, in addition to what we've, we've, we've already said. Go ahead. I declare unto you the gospel. I'm declaring unto you. This is Paul. And it's not the only place he says this, but I'm declaring unto you the gospel. Which look, preach. he's declaring it. He's declaring it. Just like Yahshua told the Father, he said, I will declare what? Your name. Thy name. Mm -hmm. I will declare thy name. Oh, it don't matter what you call him. Go ahead and read. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you. Which I preached unto you. Which also you have received, and wherein you stand. Which you have received, and wherein you stand. By which also you are saved. And this will save you. It will save you. And we talked about the purpose of Yahweh, you understand, being salvation. Now he's got to go about that, and he's got to go about that by pre the preaching of the gospel, or the truth. There's various ways to phrase it. In the name of Yahshua, the only name. Read. If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you. And now that's important. See, that's a conjunction, and it's only two letters long. If. Because a lot of people ain't kept it in memory. Right. They forgot about it. Mm -hmm. Our class went from 82 to 42 to uh, sometimes on a Saturday night, we get a big crowd of 20 now. <laughs> it's a crowd. Mm -hmm. Hey, look at all the people in here. <laughs> but you know what? There's angels in there. I don't know how many there are. I, I can't see them. They're in there. And they're in here today too. And look, the devil's sitting in here too. Read, please. If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you. You've got to keep it in memory. You've got to keep it. You've got to retain it. Read. Unless you have believed in vain. Unless you made it meaningless. Don't make it meaningless. Read. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. How that? Now this is the gospel. Mm -hmm. He's going to define it. How that, read. Joshua yes. died for our sins. He died for our sins according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. According, now that's important. It's got to be according to the scriptures. Not according to Father LaDucci getting up there in front of St. Cecilia's and saying, Yahshua died for your sins. Well, what's that mean? And we used to sit in Mass and they'd, they'd, they'd go, um, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, Lamb of God. And we were supposed to do, Lamb of God, what, take away the sins of the world? Was that it, Peg? Take away the sins of the world. You had to beat your heart and stuff. And then you had to stand up. Then you had to kneel. Then you. Had to... <laughs> What's the Lamb of God? Nobody knew what anybody was talking about. It's just rituals. It's just, it's just physical motions you're going through, and it didn't do anything for you. It didn't do anything for your inner man. Read. And that he was buried. And that he was buried. The tomb, see? Read. And that he rose again the third day. Again the third day. According to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. Now that's the gospel. That's what it is. And we can run it down through every one of those plates on that chart right over there. See, it, it, time permitted. But I'm sure you've seen that done. I'm sure that you have. Now, Let's go back to this article. Okay. Okay. 
Um, circulation, so this tiny paper, Circulation 2300 at its peak, launched one of the most relentless and single-minded crusades in the history of the Southern press, mm -hmm. during which East went from being an eager-to-please businessman. He went from being an eager-to-please, right? Mm -hmm. I used to be that way. I wanted people to like me. I wanted to fit in, join the fraternity in college, the whole thing. You understand? I've gone from that to now, I don't care if people like me, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> Although I have that meek nature that Peggy was talking about, you know, that very mild mannered and... Right, Chuck? Yes. See? Uh, no, I'm, I don't go out of my way to be offensive, okay? But I'm not going to tell somebody what they want to hear so that they'll like me. I have to tell them the truth. And when I was sick in the hospital and, and laying in the bed in the rehab and I had my fi whole family come in there, and they were all around the bed, and they said, listen, I have to tell you this. I have to tell you um, because I love you. But if you don't come back to class, you're going to lose your souls. I had to tell them. I, I was putting me to tell them that I had to tell them. Do you understand? You had, it was burning in my heart. So he went from being an eager-to-please businessman. I, I wasn't eager to please my physical family. I wanted them to like me, but hey, you know. Read. To what he called an ulcerated pistol-packing editor. Pistol-packing. <laughs> what did Dr. Kinley say? Shoot, Shoot from the hip. <laughs> pistol-packing. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> And let the chips what? Fall, fall, fall where, where they may. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say Dr. Kinley, I'm not giving glory to the man. Right. I mean Yahshua in him. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean. Because mm -hmm. only Yahshua could reveal all of this. Right. This is. You know what? I'm going to forget the rest of the article, even though there's more stuff in there. Because I want to. Uh, summarize, kind of. And uh, I want to go to Daniel, second chapter. Uh, start reading in 31, if you would. You know, a lot of this stuff may seem repetitive to you, redundant to you, but I'm trying to make it all work together. Um, Thirty-one. Daniel two thirty-one. Look, the whole thing is about Nebuchadnezzar's dream, and um, none of his wizards, none of his wise men, none of his soothsayers. Uh, see, and look, there were some very, very, very intelligent people back there. Okay, see that clock in the back of the room? They developed the basic principles that our, we, our clocks still go by. So we're not talking about dummies. They knew how to predict the solstices, how to predict the equinoxes. They knew all that stuff. But they had no clue about interpreting his dream. Read. Daniel 2 and 31. And yet they found, they found this Daniel... And they brought Daniel to Nebuchadnezzar, and he said, this guy can interpret your dream. And Daniel told him, you can read it, okay? He said, Yah Yahweh Elohim gave me the ability to interpret your dream. He gave the credit to who? Yahweh Elohim. He didn't take the credit for himself. It's important. But go ahead and read Daniel 2.31, Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. Now here, 
you don't have a Babylon chart in here, but that's all right. See, you have this history plate. Mm -hmm. So here's the image he saw. Okay? Go ahead and read. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, mm -hmm. stood before thee. Stood before thee. And the form thereof was terrible. The form was terrible. See? Or, in other words, awesome. Go ahead. 32. This image's head was of fine gold. This image's head, and it's painted here, mm -hmm. gold. See it? Go ahead and read. His breast and his arms of silver. See the silver? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That's, that's Persia. That's Babylon. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. His belly and his thighs of brass. Belly and thighs of grass. That was Greece. Alexander the Great. And that, see, we have this play, and it's labeled apostasy. Okay? Because it's going against the truth. But history is fine. History is a fine label. Because what this is doing is it's showing how history follows the pattern. You see, there's a pattern that precedes every one of these plates. So that every plate on the chart, see the, see the pattern? This is going by this pattern. Everything has to follow the pattern. Everything. When these people in this school say, I don't need the pattern anymore. I don't need the law and the prophets. That's, that's very dangerous. That's very, very stupid. That's stupid, I said. <laughs> Go ahead and read. 33, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. In other words, there was pagan Rome, the pagan Roman Empire, and then when they collapsed, the papal, papal Rome. Okay? Two legs, two feet, blah, blah, whatever. He's interpreting the dream for him. And then he tells them what the empires were. And the thing is, he's telling them about this before it happened. Who does that? Do you know how powerful and majestic Babylon was? They never dreamed anybody would conquer them. Never. But Yahweh Elohim said, it's going to happen. And Persia's going to do it. And you know what? That's just how it happened in history. And then Alexander the Great defeated Darius in a monstrous battle. Do you understand? Darius the Persian. And he becomes all powerful. Then, then the Roman Empire, it just takes over everything in the Mediterranean. It was called Mare Nostrum, Our Sea. They called it Our Sea. Mediterranean means between the lands. Europe was up here, and North Africa was here. See? Mediterranean Sea. And this image lies across that head starts in Babylon, and the feet end up in Rome. But this is the same thing. It's just not laid out on a map of Europe. Okay? But the Roman Empire was vast. Vast. Went all the way up to Scotland. All the way down to Egypt. All the way over to Assyria. And all the way over to Spain. That's a big area. Do you understand? Yeah. And the pole and the, the <laughs> oh my God, Caesar was called Pontifex Maximus. What's the Pope called? Pontifex Maximus. Mm. Oh, they forgot one. <laughs> they forgot to take that one out. But uh, go ahead and read. Daniel 2.34, thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands. A stone. Now a stone is cut out. You can read up above that the stone was cut out of a mountain. Now the stone is, 
Yahweh Elohim, or Yahshua, the mountain is Yahweh. And it says on our chart, on the stone it says, Gospel of <coughs> Yahshua. Do you understand? Gospel of Yahshua, or truth. So that's what this stone is. I want you to understand that. The stone is a manifestation. The principle is the truth. Everybody follow? Go ahead. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands. Without hands. Look. Ha. He didn't have a bunch of masons go in there and cut the stone out of the mountain. Go ahead. Which smote the image. It smote the image. It smote it. Read. Upon his feet. Upon his feet. That were of iron. Which is the feet would represent what? Foundation. Foundation. Read. Upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Broke them to pieces. And Dr. Kinley said that the Catholic. Roman Catholic Church was going to what? Fall what? Flatter than a fritter. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> Go ahead and read. 35. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold. In other words, the history of these empires coming down through history. And it all began in Babylon when man came out of Eden, do you understand? And all the nonsense that began in Babylon was carried on, carried on all out through history, all the way down to the ended up in the Roman Catholic Church, which meant all the other churches. See how. Uh, don't have time. But go ahead and read. I'm trying to get to, to see that all that idolatry, and Israel got caught up in it too. I could show you the names of the gods, the goddesses, everything. But Israel got caught up in it too. All the countries, everything. And it, do you understand? So the stone or the truth is smashing the lie. It's smashing Idolatry. That's the principle I want you to see. Go ahead and read. 35. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and became, and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floor. What's chaff? Powdered dust. When, when they do wheat and they throw it in the air, the, the wheat comes down and the chaff what? Flies away. Flies away. Yeah. Right? It's the waste. So the kingdoms like chaff, read. And became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. Yes. And the wind carried them away. The wind, look, in Yahweh's eyesight, all this idolatry has already been ended. It's already been carried away. We're just waiting for the manifestation to catch up. And you look at the world out here today and you see that it is. It is. The evil of men's thought is just the thoughts of men's mind are just evil continually, just like they were back here. Go ahead and read. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain. It became a great mountain. And filled the whole earth. And filled the whole earth. Now it says somewhere that um, he will set up a kingdom. Um, keep going, I guess. Um, this is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Oh, I, I can't. Now, now, or, 37? Okay, 39. Okay. 39. okay. Well, wow. no, keep going. We'll go 37. Yeah. Thou, thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the Elohim, for Yahweh of heaven, hath given thee a kingdom. I don't have time to. Forty-four. Okay. Forty-four. 
for, see, I just don't have time, but yes. go ahead. And in the days of these, okay, Daniel 2.44. Ah, there we go. And in the days of these kings. Now in the days of these kings. That's when, look, Herod was around. Augustus had, had just died. Nero was going to come into power. Uh, Cleopatra, okay, she had just died. Mark Antony. Oh, in the days of these kings, Yahshua had his ministry. You understand? He walked around and preached the gospel, right or wrong. And he used the law and the prophets. And then Paul did exactly the same thing. And then our founder did exactly the same thing. Is that right, Bob? That's right. So what are we supposed to do? Same exactly thing. the same thing. Mm -hmm. Read. And in the days of these kings shall the Elohim of heaven set up a kingdom. Now in the days of these, he set up a kingdom. Lo, they asked Joshua, hey, where's the kingdom? And he said, doesn't come with observation. You can't say, Lo, it's here. Lo, it's there. For the kingdom of Yahweh is what? Within. It's within. It's within you sitting in these chairs. That's a remarkable thing. I mean, it ties in with what Peggy was talking about. Do you understand? We're lambs. He's the shepherd. We're his flock. It's a kingdom. We're a body. He's the head. It, it all goes together. Go ahead and read. And in the days of these kings shall the Elohim of heaven set up a kingdom. Now he's going to set up a kingdom. Read. Which shall never be destroyed. It will never be destroyed. What you have in you will never be destroyed. This all these empires were destroyed. Mm -hmm. The British Empire was destroyed. The Nazi Empire was destroyed. The Russian Empire was all of them down through history. The Assyrian Empire. There were there were hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. They all were destroyed. The kingdom that's in you will never be destroyed. These attributes in you, look, they're in there. And they'll never, these are divine. They cannot be destroyed. They will never be destroyed. It's beautiful. Never be destroyed. That's it, right? Which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. It shall not be left to other people. That's Yahshua's kingdom. It's Yahshua's. He's in control. You understand? So I'm out of time, and I hope I didn't leave anything out there. I probably left all kinds of stuff out there, but um, thank you very much. I hope that it was edifying. I always hope that the body is edified. Uh, all praise be to Yahshua the Messiah. Thank you very much. our class for this morning and afternoon. Is there any announcement? Mm -hmm. Hello. Okay. May we all stand to be dismissed with the doxology taken from the last two verses of Jude. And we hold classes here on Sunday from 11 to 1 and on Wednesday from 7 to 9. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both for all times, now and ever. Let us all say, Amen.